Hi, I'm Dave. I'm one of the sound designers and recorders for Boom Library. And today I'm very excited to give you a first insight into the production of our latest library, Cinematic Strikes. So why Cinematic Strikes? Basically, we tried to uh, create a new library which is a bit different to cinematic metal, cinematic hits, cinematic trailers. We kind of focused this time on really big sounding percussive drum hits and built this library around that topic. After an excessive research period, we came up with a massive list of drums and percussion we wanted to record. We had on there, for example, taikos, bass drums, toms, snares, wood blocks, and many more. We also have the possibility to go on location and test all those drums and evaluate their sound, which was really useful for us in the process. We always wanted to provide sound designers with a close, medium and far perspective of our drum recordings. Even though our recording consisted of 16 single tracks, we thought it would be most useful for people to actually have a close, medium, far perspective to make it usable straight out of the box. Let's have a quick look at the tracks in our recording session. OK, so here we have a look at the session I put together for this uh, video, which is a uh, taiko drum. For this particular drum, we thought 12 mics on location was uh, most suitable. So let's have a look at these different mics. First, we start with the close group. Then we look at the medium group and the far group down here. So the close group consists of a D112 microphone, AKG. We have an SM57 left and SM57 right. Let's have a quick listen to the D112. The SM57 left. And the SM57 right. So let's have a listen to the close group all together. For us, that group is really important to design the kind of heavy impact, the first impact of the sound. Let's have a look at the medium group next. So this consists of a Decca tree, which we measured correctly, um, the distance between all the mics involved. So the Decca tree consists of the DPA pencil mic, an 8040 left and an 8040 right. And also, in addition to that, we also put in uh, an MS set, which consists of an 8050 and an MKH30 Sennheiser. Let's have a listen to the MS first. So as you can hear, we have a lot of nice room information on that, on the medium group here. DPA pencil mic next. And actually, I think it would make a lot more sense to play the Decca tree all together. So let's listen to the DPA pencil, the 8040 left and the 8040 right all together in that Decca tree configuration. Nice, cool. And then moving on to our far mics, which basically give nice washed out character to the sound, which is especially important to create size later on in the design process. We have an AKG414 left, which is facing the wall, so it's indirect. And we also have a 414 right, again, indirectly facing the wall. And then we have two LOM mics, which are great Omni uh, mics, very sensitive, and they also give a really nice uh, room sound. Let's have a listen to the whole group. So we started our recording session by recording the single drum hits first. Obviously, we had to make sure that different drum hits also sound differently on the, on the drums itself. So we used different activators to achieve that. We had hard beaters. We had soft beaters. We had whips to create some extra crack. And we also used several other materials like wooden sticks and so on. We also tried to really focus on the different articulations on every single drum. So we did flams, single hits, double hits, and also drum rolls. Hiring a professional percussionist definitely helped us with a few things. First of all, to put the drum into tune, because it really had an impact on the actual drum sound and also with the performance, because they knew exactly how to play each and every drum, and it had a massive impact on the sound. After recording the single drums, we moved on to record our ensemble drums. The idea behind the ensemble recording was to create great width right from the start, but also create a bigger sound. 
Let's have a look at some of those sounds as well. Okay, so I want to show you some of the files in Sound Minor, the ensemble recordings we've done. First of all, the concert bass uh, drums ensemble, which I think is a really cool sound, so let's go into that. I'm going to first show you the near uh, perspective on this one. Then medium. And far. Works really nicely that one. And also we then mix the concert bass drums with tag curves as well. So let's have a listen to those near ones. And medium. And far. Cool. And what's also really nice is that we uh, also recorded snare ensembles, which really provide a nice crack kind of high frequency sound for our designs. Let's have a listen to one of the snare groups as well here near. Really nice attack to that one, medium. And then far. Hey, my name's Byron, Boom Library Sound Designer. We've just heard from Dave, who's told us all about the recording process. Um, once we've done that, we bring the files back into the studio and we clean them up, remove all the clicks and pops and things like that. So we've got a library of sounds ready to go for the fun stuff, which is designing. So here we are in the designed library in Sound Miner. I thought I would just go through a couple of the sounds to have a quick listen to see what's in there and what's included. Um, I'll go through some of the categories. The first ones are boom sounds, quite standard sort of low frequency impacts, things like this. Rumble in the Bronx, <laughs> great name. And then we have these categories here called crack, um, which is split into aggressive and clean. So the, these are sort of used for layering on top of other drum and percussive sounds to give them more um, snap and sort of snare style crack to them. So the aggressive stuff's a bit more distorted. And the clean ones are obviously less. Great for layering on top of other drums to give them a bit more snap, which is cool. Um, then we have some uh, aggressive hits. a bit more distorted and maximized then clean hits which is quite a few of standard nice big drum hits dragon punch um, then we go to our soft hits so these have less attack and, and impact to the, the front of the sound which is nice, and then tonal. So focusing more on the harmonic content, which is nice and useful. Then punch layers, which are a little bit like the crack layers, but these are more focused on the low end and less, less top end. Great for giving a bit more punch to your, your drums. And then we have the whoosh hits, again in the ag aggressive category. Which is cool. And the clean sort of versions. A bit more your standard sort of whoosh, whoosh hits. Which are nice. And then the soft versions. and then tonal. So 
So a good variety there uh, in the designed library, which is cool. So now we've had a listen to some of the sounds in the design library, let's take a look at one of them in Pro Tools. So here we are in Pro Tools looking at one of the design sounds. We're looking at uh, Taken, which is one of the clean hit sounds. Um, I thought we'd look at this one because, as you can see, it's only broken up into four layers, four sounds. Um, each one is sort of occupying a different frequency range, but it just shows you um, how easy it is to take the construction kit sounds and build something um, quite usable quite quickly with just four layers, which is cool. Uh, let's have a look at some of the processing on some of these layers and listen to the original sound. So let's turn off, this is the first layer. So that's kind of like the attack part, I guess. We turn off the processing. And what we got here, so we've got some EQ to roll off some of the low end. Um, Multiband limiter to bring up the level somewhat. Good old low ender to add some more subs. Um, enforcer, which I love, helps add um, more attack to the sound. So we listen without that. And we listen with, which gives more snap to the front of the drum, which is great. Um, and then Sony's Oxford inflator to add a bit more uh, harmonic. It's almost like harmonic distortion, but also making it a bit louder. Which is cool, so that's the first, part, first sound, first layer. The next one is uh, an ensemble of concert toms, which is this. It's kind of like more the sort of noisy mid, mid-range stuff. So on this one we're using, again, we're rolling off some of the lows, um, multiband limiter to make it a bit more louder, and some crystallizer, which is doing like a pitch shifted sort of tight delay. That's that layer. And then we have more of a bass sub layer here which helps just to give it a bit more sustain in the low ends, which was originally a snare, a group of snares, which is quite mad to get the bass out of that. Again, we've got some, um, some EQ rolling off the tops, um, making it a bit louder with some multiband limiting, similar sort of trick with the crystallizer, pitch shifted delay, some Oxford inflator, and even more limiting to get it louder. Uh, that one and then this last sound I don't have the chain in here but this was done in sound minor and it sounds a bit like this it sounds like a filtered freak uh, from sound toys with a bit of bit of limiting to make it louder so that helps to fill out the mid-range really so all the layers together and that's it um, a little bit of we do have set up some reverbs down here from Stratus. Two different ones, a tight one and a longer one. And we also have some sidechain compression. So you can see when the main sound, this, this sound here, plays, it actually ducks the reverb, which is quite nice. Helps clean up the, the start of the sound so you don't get that reverb in the start, but it comes up in the tail, which is nice. Then we also have a bit of um, mastering on the, on the pre-mixes, so some tidied up of the low end, some vitamin to help shape the tone of the sound, and some, um, some limiting, and that's about it. So that's it from us. I hope you enjoyed this little insight into the making of Cinematic Strikes. We hope you enjoyed the library.